welcome everyone uh, to our third session for the day. Um, as you know, my name is Hussein Bukhari. I am your MC for the evening. And in our third session, uh, we've got an amazing session planned for you. Uh, and I am joined by none other than Nick Kellett, who will be running the session. Nick Kellett is the founder and CEO of Deploy Solutions, which builds softwares using uh, data from space. He's taken advantage of his programming skills to live and work around the world while following developments in space sector for nearly 30 years. With technical expertise and business credentials and a passion for space, Nick helps businesses do great things uh, with space data as well as his technical expertise. He has been uh, writing online about space exploration um, since 2013 on his blog. And I will share his blog with you shortly. And without a further ado, I'd like to invite Nick um, to share uh, his insights with us. Nick, the floor is yours. Um, thank you so much, everybody. It's uh, wonderful to be here. Um, I, you know, many of you, I think uh, we've met before actually at previous uh, Canadian Space uh, Summits. And of course, that's, uh, you know, where I certainly realized that uh, I could take my passion for space exploration and actually, um, you know, start to <laughs> start to do some um, some real things with it. So uh, it's really a pleasure for me to talk about uh, space apps today. Um, this time, a year ago, when we were able to meet in person, I was actually speaking about the uh, 2019 event. So this is really a continuation of that. And thank you very much for that introduction, Hussein. Um, I'd like this to be an interactive session. I, I want to give you an update. There's a lot going on in terms of space apps. So I'm going to get through some slides. But really, um, I'm hoping that some of you will have a chance to ask some questions in the chat or, or uh, you know, ask one of the uh, organizers, such as Hussein. And I'd be happy to answer those. I really like this to be interactive. So with that said, um, are you all able to see my screen? Yep. Uh, I just need to present it. OK. Um, Sure can. All right. I think I need to share. Sorry, I'll share the other one. There you go. How's that? Excellent. All right. Um, so a bit of history. Again, I started to speak about this last year. Um, you know, this is um, an ongoing event and um, you know, it's been around since 2012. NASA actually started it. Uh, it's now the world's largest hackathon. Uh, last year, there were 29,000 people in a lot of cities around the world who participated. And it had a number of goals. But at a high level, NASA really understood that they had a lot of data they didn't quite know what to do with. And at the same time, they wanted to unlock the creativity and innovation uh, from people around the world. And this has actually been a, a wild success. Um, Canadian Space Agency has been involved in this event for a number of years now. Uh, in previous years, they did challenges uh, themselves. Uh, this year, it's a little different. They are actually working directly with NASA and some of the other space agencies on all the challenges. And the question is whether there's CSA data available for some of the challenges or not. But in previous years, as one example, to give you an idea of the kind of things uh, that CSA was interested in, uh, there was a challenge for uh, David St. Jacques mission around um, radiation. Uh, they also had a Stratus uh, um, atmospheric balloon that was taking observation. Uh, data and so they made those data sets available to uh, to Canadians uh, who could try to come up with solutions for some of the challenges that they posed. So there's really been a Canadian flavor for a number of years, um, which has been you know really great and and um, strongly supported by the Canadian Space Agency. And I'll talk about that shortly. Uh, I wanted to give you an example uh, very briefly of of uh, you know the kind of thing that you could get uh, from one of these events, these hackathons. They're really time limited events uh, where you're you're intended to solve a challenge. You can do it in any number of ways. Many of the challenges are solved using um, software or digital uh, tools, but I mean, you can create hardware tools as well. And the example that we have here is from a team uh, that called themselves Team Mooncake. And um, they were um, two young girls who wanted to um, create a video of a, a young girl dreaming about being the first uh, woman to walk on the moon. And so they created a, a really charming video it took advantage of um, the latest news at the time that was, um, you know, the mission uh, that had landed on, on uh, or crashed, I guess, into the moon and, and left some tardigrades behind. So they were able to combine their creativity, their knowledge of digital media, and, um, you know, their desire to reach out to, to young people and to encourage them to dream of space. And they created a video. And so this is an example of the kind of thing that you can get uh, arising out of these, you know, 48 hour hackathons, which I think is pretty interesting. So, uh, oops. 
I wanted to talk about uh, 2020. And this was obviously a weird year because we all started to organize it in January, February, and then COVID started to hit and then everything got pretty weird. So there were actually uh, not one, but two hackathons in 2020. Uh, the first one was a COVID-19 special edition as it was called. Um, that happened on May 30th to 31st and NASA, ESA, JAXA, CSA and CNES all joined together to host a virtual um, hackathon. And in fact, it was pretty popular. There were about 15,000 participants in 150 countries. Um, you know, we were all getting used to the lockdown at that time. It was a very chaotic period, as I'm sure we all remember. It seems like a long time ago, but it wasn't that long ago. Uh, but ultimately, the goal was to solve challenges using space data uh, related to the COVID pandemic. And so these, there's a screenshot on the right of some of the, uh, the teams that ended up winning that uh, from all over the place. Uh, at the same time, there's also the regular edition. I don't know if that's the right term for it, but the event that we would normally host uh, every year, and that occurred on October uh, 2nd to 4th, so just about a month ago. Uh, and again, uh, all these organizations hosted a, a virtual hackathon for safety reasons, entirely virtual. Um, this time, there were 26,000 participants in 150 countries. So I think the virtual aspect of it made it uh, so that there were more people who were able to participate and actually lowers the barriers to, uh, to entry of this event, which is actually pretty interesting. And we're gonna talk about that later. Uh, there were 2,300 projects. Uh, NASA hasn't yet come up with their winners, but the Canadian Space Agency has picked some people. Um, so in terms of the attendance in Canada, these are the numbers that we know about through the CSA. Um, there are a number of cities that participated uh, as well as people uh, joining in virtually. Uh, and overall, there were 341 participants in Canada, uh, which is about twice the national average, I think. Uh, it's a little hard to tell, but that's about twice the, the average, I think. Um, 89 projects were submitted, and uh, 33 of those used Canadian Space Agency data. So that's actually pretty cool. And um, I think they were quite, uh, quite thrilled about that. And they have selected uh, their winners. So um, congratulations to 3.14 heads from Toronto. Obviously, one of the areas of creativity is, is the team names. Uh, and also, the winner of the special prize for World Space Week was uh, Open IntelliData from Kitchener-Waterloo. And so we had a team from Toronto, a team from Kitchener-Waterloo. And there were also some finalists um, you know, from a number of cities, including from Ottawa. Uh, they, they did um, challenges related to forest fires and um, you know, air quality and automatic detection of hazards and, and things like that. So there's some pretty interesting uh, um, projects and challenges that are being tackled as part of these hackathons. So I wanted to talk briefly about some of the organizers successes and lessons learned. We have talked as organizers in you know past years and I think I mentioned it at a presentation last year, we would really like to bring together the organizers across Canada a little more. Uh, and we got that this year. In fact, COVID basically forced us to do that because we all went online. Um, and the Canadian Space Agency support, which has always been strong, you know, re they really went above and beyond. Um, and so we were able to work together um, and collectively organize and run our first ever entirely virtual and I guess I would say national event for space apps, which is actually really, really cool. Uh, we had our first ever national sponsor. So thank you to MDA for, for doing that. You're actually a pioneer. Um, we knew that already, but uh, you are again when it comes to the space apps and thank you. And at the same time, the SEDS also had a Toronto Youth event. Uh, so there are a lot of interesting things uh, here that I think, uh, you know, are obvious successes, apart from the fact that so many people participated and we had the chance to, uh, you know, have Canadians um, uh, work on these, uh, on these space apps challenges. Um, so, so this was actually a pretty interesting year for that. But we learned some lessons. Um, so first of all, it really helped that the CSA set up regular Teams meetings. So Microsoft Teams is what we use. And that gave us a way of kind of formally uh, convening as organizers with them um, on a, I think eventually we got to about every two weeks, um, but it was, it was about a, a monthly process. And it gave us a chance to really, um, you know, synchronize what we were doing. At the same time, we used a lot of offline tools. Uh, it became really important to do um, what is called asynchronous communication. So there was a tool called Discord, which is used by gamers. Uh, you're able to chat and you can create your own channels on there. It's a bit like Slack. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with Slack. Uh, at the same time, you could do screen sharing, you could set up videos and so on. And this was very interesting for asynchronous communication because some of us were working at different time zones and at different times, and we were able to kind of dip in and out of this communication tool in between the formal meetings and keep things going. Uh, we were also able to establish some organizational standards across the country. We were able to share some information and content that was very useful. Uh, we were able to start on a national fundraising system 
Uh, and, and also um, we did realize that there was a bit of overlap between the cities in terms of scheduling. And also we felt a little bit disconnected from our participants. In fact, during the event, during the COVID event and during the Space Apps Hackathon, sometimes we weren't really sure who was out there and what they were up to and whether they needed help or not. And that was something that never came up in a physical location because obviously you could kind of wander over and listen in and see if anybody needed help. So that was a real lesson learned um, that we found from this virtual event. So uh, what does 2021 look like? Um, we know that it's gonna be October 2nd to 3rd. Uh, NASA's already chosen that and it's actually gonna be the 10th year anniversary. So it's gonna be a special year. We have a lot of questions as organizers. Is it gonna be safe to hold a physical event in October? We don't know. Uh, could we host a physical event in one location and virtual events in another? Uh, do we wanna hold a hybrid event where it's physical and virtual? What does that mean? And can we build on our success from this year? So with that said, I wanted to talk about the concept of space apps in Canada and then really open the floor to some questions. Oh, I'm going backwards, so let's not do that. All right. So some of the challenges that we have as organizers is these hackathons are one-time events and it's really expensive for us in terms of our time and our energy uh, and it leads to a sort of inconsistent standard year over year. There's not really a framework for us to uh, you know, keep going in, in a sort of forward direction, uh, apart from relying on volunteers to jump in and jump out. And there's not really an incentive or an ongoing budget for us to do this either. Basically when the event's over, we kind of shut down again for a few months. And also I think we need to continue to make a sustained and consistent effort to improve diversity and, and innovation. Uh, we're also having trouble with communication before and after the events. And so these are things that I think we're gonna struggle with uh, in future years as well unless we try to address it, which is what I'd like to talk about next. Um, so diversity, um, I think that we already have an inclusive diverse event. Um, and I think that the virtual aspect really uh, further reduces barriers to entry. And this is all very positive, but I think in order to be better, uh, we have to make a sustained effort. And so I believe that we need to pool our resources and outreach efforts to specifically attempt to uh, overcome some of these barriers to um, people in underrepresented groups uh, attending this event and participating. And I think that's going to require some organization and some, some standardization and, and some sustained effort. So what I'm suggesting is uh, Space Apps in Canada. I'm not calling it Space Apps Canada because the NASA International Space Apps Hackathon might have a problem with that branding. Uh, it's Space Apps in Canada. And I think the benefits are that uh, it's a low cost and, and low risk way of getting outreach for space activities. We can definitely increase people's STEAM skills, especially in underrepresented groups, groups and, and educating our youth. We can promote job creation and growth. We've actually seen people get hired as a result of these events uh, directly. Uh, we can promote science and open data, which is more important than ever in this world, as we know. And at the same time, Canada has a lot of uh, you know, skills in these areas that we can take advantage of. I think we have a unique opportunity. Um, I don't want to go through all these bullet points, but we remember Space Matters and the Don't Let Go campaigns, uh, Don't Let Go Canada campaigns from previous years as, a, as an important uh, lobbying efforts that, uh, that paid dividends. And I think that uh, organizing around space apps in Canada could do the same. Um, I think that uh, we have great R&D and innovation infrastructure already, so there's no reason why we couldn't leverage that. Um, we have a globally unique level of government support for space apps hackathons. I don't think anybody else is providing the level of support that CSA does to Canadian cities. Uh, so we can build on these um, you know, very important elements and create enduring success if we use a little bit of imagination, experimentation and investment. So what I'm proposing, it's just my recommendation, is the Canadian Space Society plus the Canadian Space Agency plus local organizers could be space apps in Canada. So if the Canadian Space Society can act as the official national sponsor for the Space Apps Challenge in Canada, with involvement and support from the Canadian Space Agency and assistance from other national organizations and groups to assist local organizers, I think we can achieve a lot of our aims. And I don't think it would be uh, especially onerous to do this either. And I wanna talk about that. So why is the Canadian Space Society the perfect sponsor? Well, briefly, it's a national nonprofit organization. Obviously we have the goal of promoting the involvement of Canadians in the development of space. It's got decades of involvement and influence it has an important status as a federally incorporated nonprofit corporation and charity. So that means it has the financial and administrative overhead and the oversight uh, that I think is required to assist with some of the administrative and financial uh, burdens that organizers would have for space apps events. And it, importantly, it can run long-term projects. Why uh, would the space, uh, Canadian Space Agency be uh, interested? Well, obviously they already are interested, <clears throat> so that wouldn't change. Um, they are definitely, um, 
you know, uh, involving hackathon uh, and space apps hackathons in their uh, open data uh, efforts and their uh, community engagement efforts. And they want to raise awareness of their mandated missions. They want to promote STEM careers. Uh, they want to unlock the value of their data and they want to support open government initiatives. So I think, I think they could be very interested in this already and, and they've demonstrated that through their involvement. So what would this structure look like? I'm just proposing uh, a confederated model. So, you know, these are grassroots organizations led by volunteers such as myself. You know, we jump in, we jump out. I don't think anybody wants a lot of overhead. I, I certainly wouldn't recommend creating or, or, you know, registering or incorporating any, any kind of new uh, body. So I think we're probably talking about a world where the Canadian Space Society acts as a sort of hub uh, and provides a lot of um, what I would call a standing offer of web services and tools. You know, we, we use Git, which is a source code repository. There could be a Git, you know, provided by CSS. Um, you know, maybe uh, the ability to use a Discord uh, server as we did this year, it could be something that's hosted by CSS and so on. Uh, having a WordPress site uh, that allows uh, some, some blogging and some events uh, and communication activities and social media, that could be something that CSS provides as well. And I don't think this could be uh, too onerous because I think that a lot of this administrative activity could be delegated to, to volunteers. Uh, while at the same time, CSS would still kind of, kind of uh, own, own the overall um, tools uh, or at least you know, subscribe to them. So I think what's beneficial here too, and this is an important point, is the local organizers are not required to follow you know, the structure, it's available to them. And I think that's really important because we have a country with you know, different needs and big time zone gaps and you know, different people want to do different things. So we should treat this more as like a capability enhancer or a force multiplier, rather than saying, you know, thou shalt do this or thou shalt do that. And that's why I think this confederated model could be quite interesting. Uh, what could the structure provide to organizers? Well, um, the ability to gain funding support and reliable expense repayments, uh, sharing in a pool of national funding, sponsorship and in-kind offers. Uh, importantly, having access to the web services tools and especially content that's standardized and available would really go a long way to reducing the, the burden that we have as organizers every time we, you know, try to do one of these events in our cities every year. So I think that that's a major gain to organizers without requiring them necessarily to do things they don't want to do, which I, I believe is very important here. Um, so with all that said, I know that's a lot to take in, and I'm wondering if anybody has any questions, but what I'm basically recommending is a confederated model organized around the Canadian Space Society with the involvement of the Canadian Space Agency and of course other organizations to try to provide more national capacity for the space apps in Canada over a long period of time. So that's my recommendation. Does anybody have any questions? Excellent, thank you so much, Nick. Uh, that was an amazing presentation, I think. Uh, it's safe to say that everything that you've achieved with Space Apps so far is only the start. Um, so we do have a few questions uh, and uh, I'll pull this up. And if you just wanna quickly stop sharing your screen, so I'll share mine and then we can go from there. <coughs> Excellent. All right, so um, the first question, obviously, what do you see as areas that are ripe for software revolution in Canadian or international space companies? I think um, our lead in artificial intelligence is something we should absolutely build on. And I think if there's, if there's one thing we really focus on, it's, it's artificial intelligence and, and big data in the downstream, um, as well as the expertise in the satellite imagery and so on, that those seem like no brainers to me. Um, but having said that, I mean, we, we really have a tremendous opportunity uh, in all kinds of areas. Um, you know, digital media is really, really important and communication is really, really important. And these are all things that Canadians are good at too. So uh, I, I would say if, if we had to choose one, just, well, just one thing, I mean, we see a lot of uh, work around artificial intelligence, even in our hackathons. So sure, we could focus on that. But I think part of the fun of these space apps is really allowing people to just try different things. And so I almost, I would almost say, we shouldn't choose, we should see what happens, see what people do. That's what I would say. Excellent, very well stated. Um, next question, can we leverage groups like MLH to sustain these hackathons? Is there a strategy to involve less representative province and territories? So I think this is a great question and to some degree it goes to my point. Um, it is such a, a, an overhead and, and you know, I don't think anybody, myself included, would wanna sound like we're complaining about this because it's a, it's a tremendously fun event. But uh, we really, 
not in a position to do these kind of strategic interactions right now, treating these as a series of one-offs and, and certainly not able to involve less represented provinces and territories because we rely on volunteers there to kind of opt in. So I think we're really lagging on the outreach, uh, you know, that could be, could be used certainly to involve people in these territories and provinces uh, and, and also involve major league hacking in these other established groups. I think that would be a big win from this uh, model that I proposed. And additionally, I think that, uh, you know, naturally we are going to involve less represented provinces and territories a little bit because of the virtual nature that we've now demonstrated works, but it still takes time and effort to kind of, um, you know, reach out to people and explain to them that, that they could participate and how they can participate. So I, I would say the answer is yes, we can do these things, but not the way we're currently going. Hey, very well said. And I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, value that we're leaving on the table, especially as Canadians, when we think about where this could be and where it is currently, uh, especially the amount of expertise that can come out of this area. And I'll move on to the next question. Um, what is the coolest solution that you've seen come out of space apps and be adopted for commercial use? To me, this is a very easy answer and it's Skywatch. Um, their earth cash platform, which I had a chance to kind of look at, uh, uh, you know, is, really um, solves a, a business challenge, which is how to make it easy for programmers such as myself to get access to data. And um, I know that they're available, they're commercial entities. So they're, they're brought up as the, um, the go-to example of this. And, and I think that they, you know, they merit that, uh, you know, they're a Canadian success story and um, they're doing very cool things. Anybody who's tried to work, you know, get their hands on satellite imagery and so on knows how cool it is, uh, you know, that uh, Skywatch can make that really easy. I'd love to provide other examples. I, I can't, uh, you know, nothing jumps to mind yet, but but this is a game of numbers, and I think the more opportunities we provide for people to who are interested to get involved in this area, the better. I can say from my personal involvement, you know, I've spun my company, which is doing big data and cloud, into um, building space apps, which is effectively, uh, you know, an, an, another example of this, and, and I hope that we'll have the success that Skywatch does, but I think we want to give people the opportunity in Canada to see what happens and to, and to take it to the next level, and actually when we were working with organizers, our judges this year, um, they were really impressed by what they saw participants do in 48 hours, and they specifically uh, suggested, and these judges are, are, you know, from a lot of uh, different business and other backgrounds, very successful, saying, you know, we would love to provide further mentoring for these uh, individuals if they want to continue with their solutions. So we want, to, we want to create a framework for that and give people the opportunity. And, um, you know, it would be great to, to say, what are the coolest solutions and come up with 10 different ideas right off the top of our heads. I think that's a, an example of the success we should be aiming at. Yeah. So in the chat, Corey's mentioned uh, a bird migration app three years ago, which was uh, was amazing. Uh, I have I, I got to look at that app. I don't know where it is, but I def I like bird watching, so um, I like to see what that where that goes. But the last question for uh, for this session uh, is: There a framework or pipeline to enable space app participants and assist us further developing our solutions into products or services? So this is taking to the next level, you know, from just app to commercial use. So I had an idea for that that I was discussing last year, and it was to create basically that pipeline to uh, have multiple hackathons, you know, one after the other and so on. But um, we haven't had a chance to really, uh, you know, operate on that idea. And additionally, um, I was just mentioning the example of our judges at the Space Apps Auto event saying, you know, we'd love to provide more assistance subsequently. This to me again comes back to the point that I think the Canadian Space Society uh, you know, in, with involvement with other groups such as the CSA and so on, can provide that kind of assistance so that we can take it to the next level. Because if we have more consistent communication, more consistent tool use, um, if we have content that we can share, if we have people who want to provide assistance, which many people do, and we have this ongoing thing, and it's not a series of, you know, one-off events that happen every 12 months, then we have that, that capacity. But right now we do not have that. And I think that's a real missed opportunity. And I'll say this again, I, don't, I have not seen anecdotally the level of government support for this kind of event anywhere else uh, than what I've seen from the Canadian Space Agency. So, I mean, they certainly want to step in and help. Um, the, you know, the judges that we talk to, they, they want to take this, help people take this to the next level. But we're, we don't have the capacity to do that right now. And I think that's a missed opportunity. Totally agree. You know, I've got a question for you. So, <clears throat> Space Ops, it's a, it's a very regional, local type of atmosphere. What are the potential of a, a potential future of it becoming a a, a global platform for uh, 
software engineers to be able to engage with each other on a global level. Like a software engineer from India, uh, you know, collaborating with a software engineer from Canada and then building a space app together instead of having these local, regional, regional, local or national competitions. Where do you think that can go from an international collaboration point of view? Well, I'm a big believer in that in partnerships and certainly in international partnerships. And I think that the, the 2020 year is a pivot year because we've seen the impact of COVID on everything. People now get that you can work virtually. The space industry has traditionally been very good at that. But at the same time, there's this thought that you sort of have to be physically present to do work. And, you know, we're talking to a large degree about software here, so that's even easier. But um, these solutions are supposed to be open source, which means there's nothing stopping any of us from having a registry of, you know, uh, previous projects that were done and, you know, here's the code and here's some ideas that people had or whatever, like we could standardize that stuff quite easily. I don't think what I'm suggesting here is actually very expensive in terms of dollars. I think it's actually somewhat expensive in terms of time and effort, but that's divided by the number of people who are willing to assist. And so I would, I would strongly encourage us to consider, I mean, we're talking about space apps in Canada, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be looking at, uh, at partnerships or, or collaboration elsewhere. I just think there's a starting point here that we can look at to you know, better represent people across our country. Uh, but by standardizing content, by having a, a you know, registry of these uh, projects, by you know, providing a, a, a structure where there's a follow-up and maybe people get access to some business mentorship or some seed you know, funding or whatever, it could be $5,000, it doesn't have to be a lot of money. We can really blow the doors off this thing. And I, I think that we're in the pivot year and we should really be doing that. Well, Nick, I can't say, um... Uh, how grateful I am to to have you share this with the with the Canadian audience. I think it's important to realize that there's a lot of work to be done, and I think, uh, like like I mentioned or, already, that this is just the beginning and uh, the pivotal year that we're going to be undertaking is going to be this year and then onwards from 21 to uh, you know until the next until the decade ends. You know, we'll see where the transition goes. But I really want to appreciate and thank you. I really appreciate this. And I really thank you for the bottom of my heart. And uh, again, uh, from uh, the entire organizing committee and uh, CSS to coming on and sharing uh, uh, space apps and, and uh, deploy solutions with us. Well, thank you for giving me that opportunity. And, if, and just briefly, I'd like to thank uh, all the other organizers and volunteers. There's so many people, um, you know, it, it, I have the opportunity to speak, but there's so many people who've contributed so much to this year's event and previous events, and I definitely don't want them to be overshadowed, uh, but, but thank you for giving me this chance to speak about, uh, you know, the opportunity in front of us.